Hi there, everybody. Welcome. This is the Boston University Computing and Data Sciences PhD in Data Science Virtual Information Session. My name is Mike Sieber. I am the Director of Academic Programs for Computing and Data Sciences, and I am joined by uh, two colleagues. I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. My name is Don. I'm the Assistant Director of Graduate Affairs. Hi everyone, I'm Gabe. I'm a second year PhD student with CDS. Great. So um, in this uh, webinar, we're going to talk about briefly about the PhD program, how the finances and funding work for PhD students, a little bit about faculty, uh, talk about the admissions process, um, and there'll be lots of time at the end for questions and answers. Um, so if you things come up along the way, you can put your questions in the chat. We will um, answer all of those uh, when we get to the end. So uh, for people who don't know, Boston University, uh, we are a large research university of uh, just under 18,000 graduate students, um, including about over 10,000 international students from over 200 countries. Um, and we have about 2,500 faculty members, uh, 17 different schools and colleges, over 200 fields of study. So you could do a lot of different things at BU. Uh, for those who don't know Boston, uh, Boston is a great town to be a student in. It's it's a I like to call it a manageable size of a city. It's about five million people are in the greater Boston area. Um, there are over sixty five colleges and universities in the city of Boston as well. So uh, college and university graduate students make up about ten percent of the total state population. Um, education is actually Boston's third largest industry after uh, technology and. Um, hospitality and tourism. Computing and data sciences. So we are the newest academic unit at Boston University. We are an interdisciplinary unit, um, which is why our name, we'll talk a little bit more about it later, but why we're the faculty of computing and data sciences rather than the college or school of data science um, or something like that. We were founded to be inherently interdisciplinary and allow our students to take courses in different areas outside of just a traditional data science. This was trying to break the kind of um, mentality of a lot of schools where uh, different disciplines can be very siloed in their own specific areas and students can't easily branch out into other um, areas. Interdisciplinary was a natural fit for data science because as a discipline, data science is inherently interdisciplinary. Um, so it worked out really well for us. The image you are looking at is this is our building. This is the Center for Computing and Data Sciences. Uh, we opened in January of 2023. It's uh, a really, really cool building. It's um, talk more about it a little bit later, but it's a, a very fun place to be a student. And this is where the program is based. Um, you this is where the uh, you know your office space would be as a phd student um not all of your classes would necessarily be in this building but you'll be in there um a lot and it's a really fun place to be so the phd program is five years it is students are typically in the first two years taking um, taking classes to fulfill uh, their competency and subject core requirements. Um, we also have some research seminars you take. You also do what are called rotations, where uh, you do uh, you work on research, spend time with different professors, um, with the hope being that at the end of year two, you'll have identified a specific advisor that you will be working with who will you will then join their lab and work with them for the remaining three years. Um, most students will get their courses done in the first two years. It's not a requirement. You can, um, you know, spread those out a little bit more. Everything you do in the program is in service of what you do at the end, which is your dissertation. Everything you're doing is, is to support your research, is to get you to that dissertation at the end of the program. So we're incredibly flexible with students in terms of, you know, courses and requirements, um, as long as you can make the, the justification that it is to the benefit of your research and your, your dissertation at the end. Um, the actual requirements of the program is we have eight different competencies. Um, these are things like you know, mathematical foundations or machine learning um, or algorithms or something like that. And you have to fulfill um, 
six uh, competencies with at least five classes. And the reason for that is that there are some classes that fulfill multiple competencies. Um, you also then have to focus in one area that's called a subject core, where you'll take three classes in, in that specific area. And you can actually have some overlap between your competency courses and your subject core as well. So don't worry too much about the number of classes. That's um, not really an issue for, for students in our program. If you ha do have questions about like specific courses, it's all available on our website. If you go to just PhD course list, it'll give you each competency and uh, what um, classes fulfill it. So if you are joining the program straight out of uh, a bachelor's degree or, or not straight out, but you only have a bachelor's degree, okay. it is required that you complete 64 credits, um, which equals um, about 12 courses. If you already have a master's degree, then it's 48 credits is what you need to complete. Um, and you may be able to transfer some of it in. That has to be worked out. So you may be able to count some of your prior work for competency requirements. But because we're a very small program, everything's done on sort of a case-by-case -case basis with individual students. Uh, all PhDs at Boston University are fully funded, which means you don't pay any tuition. Uh, the financial aid package that you receive uh, comes in essentially three parts. The first is a scholarship. This covers your full tuition up to 18 credits a semester, which uh, pretty much no one takes that, that many. So any amount of courses you want to take, you're going to be all set. You'll never pay tuition, um, at least as long as you're, you complete it within five years. You're guaranteed five years of funding. So that's full tuition. Um, the second part is your stipend. You are paid a stipend of $43,000 a year, which comes out to $14,333 per semester. So we divide, we make it so you get paid 12 months out of the year. So you get paid through the fall, spring, and summer. Um, and the last part of the financial aid package is that BU also covers the basic student health care. So you, um, as a, if you're a full-time student in Massachusetts, you're required to have health care. So BU requires students to use the BU health insurance if you don't have your own, and the PhD program will cover that for you. The most important part about us as the Faculty of Computing and Data Sciences is our faculty. And the folks that you're looking at now, these are our tenure stream or research stream faculty. These are the professors who are currently accepting PhD students. Uh, there are a few others as well, but these are our core faculty. So when you notice on the application, it'll ask you which core faculty members are you interested in. These are the, the people that you are um, you should be selecting from. And this is all broken down again on our website. When you go to CDS faculty, you'll see breakouts for you know full faculty or just the core. Um, it's really important to know, because this was a big problem I noticed on the applications last year, is that in addition to our tenure stream faculty, we also have what are called teaching stream faculty. And these folks are, are really great. They come with a lot of expertise, but their primary focus is on teaching, which means they don't have funds for PhD students. So if you come to CDS, if you become a, a PhD student, you can still potentially work with them and do projects, but they can't be your primary advisor because they don't have funding for PhD students. So when you fill out your application, please don't list them as someone that you are interested in working with. Um, you will notice that I added this year in the text of the question itself, it does list that the following people are not accepting PhD students. And you have a lot of options because in addition to just our core faculty, again, part of why we're the faculty of is that we also have a huge number of what are called affiliated and secondary appointed faculty. And so these are professors throughout Boston University that work in data science or data related fields that have a secondary appointment within CDS. Now, only a small number of them are accepting PhD students. So again, it's really important that you check that list that is on the application and on our website before you apply, because um, I don't want to see people put in all this effort and try to work with someone who's, who's not accepting PhD students. Um, it might be that they're either full in terms of students in their lab. It could be that they don't have funding. Um, in the case of uh, Professor Giles, he's retiring at the end of this year, so he's not looking to hire any, uh, bring on any additional students. So this is just something really important when you complete the application, because I noticed um, a lot of students made this mistake on the application last year. 
Um, in addition to all the academics, I also just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, life at CDS is really fun. We do a lot of activities. Um, we're a very social bunch. Uh, I'm actually glad Gabe is on this because he's usually the champion of social events for the PhD students. So um, you let him talk about that at the end. Um, but we do a lot. We have a really great event space uh, up on the top floor of our building. We do a lot of symposiums. There's tons of speaker series and, um, you know, career focused events. But there's also a lot of fun stuff like, uh, you know, yoga nights and game nights and that sort of thing. So we really try to keep students engaged um, as much as possible. So um, for the application. So uh, it does require you to have some prior experience in uh, data science, computer science, stats. Um, those are probably the most helpful majors, um, you know, computer engineering, computer science, math and stats. But we do and accept applications and we are, we very much encourage students who may come from a different STEM field um, to come in. So some, you know, information systems, economics, bioinformatics, physics, astronomy, earth and environment, emerging media, um, you need to make sure that you have the mathematical and computational, you know, competencies and, um, you know, understand the basic principles. That's certainly a, a requirement of this program, but um, it doesn't have to be from a data science or computer science background. I think that's the, the, the really key point is that we want students who are coming from a variety of backgrounds. So the application itself is completed online. There is an application that you fill out. We will ask you for a, a CV or a resume, uh, three recommendation letters. Uh, there are two different personal statement or you know written statements that you need to submit: the personal statement and a research statement. The difference is the personal statement is looking back at your life. Essentially, this is who I am. This is how I got to now, and this is you know the important pieces of my background. The research statement is where I want to go in this PhD program. It's looking looking forward. Personal statements looking back. Research statement is looking forward. It's what kind of work do you want to do? Who do you want to work with? Um, that sort of thing. And then lastly um, is obviously your transcript for your uh, bachelor's degree. Uh, priority application deadline is December 15th. I highly recommend that you apply by that deadline, um, although we, we will accept applications uh, through February 1st, but the faculty start reviewing as soon as December 15th passes. So if you want to make sure you're at the, the front of the, or the top of the pile, it's important to apply by that deadline. It's, it's only October. You've got plenty of time, you know, so you should have no issue getting it in by then. Um, so let me just answer a couple of our frequently asked questions, and then that's pretty much what we had pre been prepared to talk about. So then we can move this on to, to questions. Um, are GRE scores required? They are not. Uh, if you have GRE scores, you can certainly submit them, but they are optional. It will not hurt you in any way um, if you uh, don't, um, don't uh, submit them. For English proficiency, uh, we do require either TOEFL, IELTS, um, or we will accept the Duolingo if that's all that you have. If you um, have a prior degree that was completed where the language of instruction was English, that will also waive the requirement for you. Uh, we already talked a little bit about funding, but I can talk more about that. The way that um, the program works is for your first two years, you're on what is called a non-service stipend, which means you get your stipend, uh, but you're not expected to essentially provide any service. So you don't need to work with a professor. You don't need to TA any classes during those first two years. We do that so that you can focus on research, so you can focus on working with faculty, figuring out what your path is going to be. Um, in your third year, you will start to be required to work as a TF, which is a teaching fellow, so assisting a professor with their class. It would probably be um, leading discussion sessions, um, and potentially, you know, helping with, you know, grading and assignments and that sort of thing, or serve as an RA, which is a research assistant, um, where you're working more in their lab on a not, not something necessarily that's tied to a class. Um, let me just answer these last two questions. Um, I'm currently in the last year of undergrad. Oh, yeah. So I know we get this a lot. A lot of students apply in their senior year of college. That is totally fine. Um, it's best to apply after you have the um, after you have the grades for the fall semester of your senior year. 
So for most students, I, you typically will have those by the end of December. Um, so if you're a senior in college, don't worry too much about applying by the priority deadline. Uh, application review, uh, you know, is is ongoing through January and February. So it's not gonna, it's not really gonna impact your chances if you wait until you apply. Um, I would recommend doing that rather than submitting the application and having to and having to resubmit a transcript later because it may get, ha have already been reviewed by the faculty by the time you get those grades in. So it's better to submit a fully complete application uh, when you submit. Um, do you need to identify a research and thesis advisor prior to applying? Um, the short answer is no. Uh, it is not actually a requirement of the application. However, your chances of being admitted are significantly higher if you identify a professor, um, if you identify a professor that you want to work with. Um, the way that we review applications typically is the professor that you indicate you want to work with is the one who is going to, um, is going to be reviewing your application. So um, I, my best advice I can give to you is when you're writing a research statement, you want to make sure that what you're including is who at CDS you want to work with and how your research aligns with their research area, because that's what they're looking for when they are hiring uh, or when they are admitting for PhD students. Um, so uh, Gabe, do you have anything you want to add about just like what it's like to, to be a student in the program? I don't mean to put you on the spot, but anything you thought that useful for people to know if they're applying to the program? I think most of it uh, should be for questions. But the one point that I just want to emphasize is that really every decision you make once you're a PhD student should be in support of your research and your dissertation and the department really takes that to heart. So there's a lot of flexibility and there are a lot of people willing to work with you to make whatever you want to happen come true. Great, right. well said. Um, so I'm gonna start answering some of the questions that were put in the chat. If you, um, other questions, um, you can uh, please just put them into the chat. So when will admissions decisions be ready? Um, probably end of February, early March is when, um, or actually probably earlier, earlier February would be my, my guess as to when decisions will be made. Um, so probably shortly after the February 1st deadline, we will try to get those all reviewed very quickly and have, um, decisions go out. Um, let's see, uh, it was a question about GREs. GREs are not required. So um, you don't need to take them. You don't need to submit them. If, if you have them and you're happy with the score, you are welcome to uh, to submit them if you want. Um, if you've already submitted an application and you're not sure and you didn't list a professor, just send an email to cds-admissions at bu.edu and we will update your application for you. Um, Yes, question about faculty. It is uh, within the application itself. So when you go into the application, it will have links there um, from, uh, it'll have links to the faculty pages and it'll list right in the question which professors do not accept PhD applications. So if you're if you're answering that question, just check to make sure the name that you have written is not directly above you in the question as someone who is not accepting um, PhD students. Um, let's see. Is it preferred that we establish a connection with one of the core faculties who we might want to work as we apply to the program? Yes, it is. Uh, it's a good idea to reach out to faculty, um, preemptively, like, uh, you know, before you, before you apply, you may just, they're, they're pretty busy. So you may just get an email from them that just says like, you know, thanks for your interest. I look forward to seeing your application. Um, so don't feel, um, discouraged at all by that. Um, but it's it's never hurts to have a little bit of communication with them beforehand. And there was a question about uh, is interview process standard to the program? That totally depends on the professor. So different professors uh, handle it differently. Some will just review the applications and make their decision based on that. Some will reach out to um, individuals to ask uh, to set up a Zoom call with them. Not every professor does that. I would say the majority don't. So if you don't get contacted about an interview, it doesn't mean that you're, you know, anything wrong is happening with your application. Um, let's see. Um, 
Does submitting before December 15th have an impact on your chance of admission? No, um, no, not at all, because we um, that we aren't going to start reviewing anything until after the December 15th deadline. So you can take your time. It's not as if if you submit earlier, it doesn't mean you're going to get uh, an earlier decision. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. What kind of capabilities aspects do you care most about for candidates in their application material? I mean, the basics are make sure that you at least, you know, have covered the competencies of data science. So have you had the mathematical and statistical and, you know, programming um you know, uh, skills, have you learned that already in your undergrad? Like, do you have the skills to jump right into the program is sort of one of the most basic um, things that we look for in applications. Beyond that, it's really about research um, and what your interests are, what you're, you know, what you've accomplished previously or what you're hoping to do. And if you're a match with what the current faculty are looking for. Um, acceptance rate. Uh, it's hard to give an exact answer because we've only been admitting students for two years for the PhD program and the application numbers have drastically increased in that time. Last year, we accepted just over 10% of applicants. Um, there wasn't any discernible difference between domestic versus international students. In the current class, it's about 60% uh, international. Um, this was put in the chat, but I'll answer here as well. Uh, yes, you only need unofficial transcripts for the purpose of the application. Uh, if you're admitted to the program, you decide you want to attend and be a student in the program, we will ask that you send an official recommendation letter, or sorry, an official transcript just before the start of classes. You can even, if like, if you get it in an envelope from your university, you can just bring it with you and hand it to us on the first day. That's um, totally fine. Um, let's see. Yeah, Gabe, do you want to answer that question that you just typed in, just for everyone? Yeah, sure. The the one about what you can do during the first two years. Yes, that'd be great. Yeah, uh, once you're in the program, uh, there's a huge amount of flexibility in terms of who you work with, uh, who you talk to, what classes you take, all of that stuff. I um, came into the program with a professor that I knew and wanted to work some with, but uh, I've done a couple of research rotations with him and I'm planning on doing a research rotation with a professor in the earth and environment department. Uh, I've taken classes in CDS and in the sociology department and in the public school of public health uh, all over the place. So really you can do anything that you find interesting for the first two years. Um, after that, you do have to find someone who will fund you and who you will work with uh, for the rest of your program. Great, thanks, Gabe. Uh, do you recommend submitting a long form academic curriculum or one page resume? Um, I think the more information you can give us, the better. Um, I mean, don't submit something that's like 20 pages, but um, if you need more than a one page resume to highlight your, um, professional accomplishments or your, you know, research, any research publications, take as much space as you need. Um, if you have a question about, do I need to submit uh, TOEFL score, TOEFL or English proficiency exams, if there's sort of specific things, just send us an email at cds-admissions at bu.edu and we'll, we'll take it from there. We'll get back to you. Um, does admissions review work on a rolling basis? So we start reviewing on December 16th. So as soon as we are past that initial deadline, um, and we, I guess, yeah, the applications are reviewed as they come in from that point, but we'll try to have decisions out, um, at some point in February. Let's see. Um, yeah, interviews, it depends on the professor. So it depends on who's reviewing your application. Some professors will do interviews and and some won't. Um, oh, Gabe, can you help me with this? What kind of level of computational and algorithm skills are we looking for for students applied from an applied field like emerging media? Could you maybe just talk, what, like, what do you think you need to have as a student in the program? That's a great question. And it depends a lot on who you work with. Uh, because there are professors doing um, everything from like very hardcore theoretical computer science uh, to my advisor does more computational social science. Um, so I have more coming at those problems from a more technical side and he's coming at those problems from a more social science side. 
Uh, at a base level, you should probably have taken some advanced math classes. Um, for the computer science side, you don't need to have that much experience. Uh, I have uh, one office mate who did a, a mechanical engineering undergrad, so did almost no um, computer science or coding or anything, and another who does theoretical computer science and does not code a single thing. So um, it depends a lot on who you work with and what you want to do, but uh, you need to be able to take higher level math courses um, without struggling too much, I would say. Thanks, Gabe. I just wanted to add on that. We also listed a couple courses that you should possess before you come to the program on our website. So feel free to check uh, on that later if you want. Um, the basic requirement is basic mathematical and computational competencies, including probability, statistics, linear algebra, programming, data structures, and algorithms. Again, these are available on our website. If you uh, don't remember, don't worry about it, go on our website. Right. Um, let's see. Um, Micah, can I answer a question about taking courses from different departments? Oh, yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, like I said, uh, Anything that's in service of your research is a good idea, um, but there's a chance classes you'll take will not count towards requirements. Um, that might be a price you're willing to pay to learn something interesting and spend a semester doing interesting, unrelated to CDS work. Um, that's something I've done before. But uh, if there is something that's helpful for your research and does seem like it maybe should fit within one of the categories, uh, there is a chance that you can work with the administration of the department and get it accepted for one of the requirements as well. Yeah. And of the, of the current courses that are approved for the PhD program, uh, about 80% of them are outside of data science. So there's already a huge number of uh, math and CS and um, and you know computer engineering type courses that are already approved for the PhD program, and we're we're every year we're updating that list of what the approved courses are. Uh, can you add a writing sample at the extra document section? Yep, sure. You can submit whatever you want if you think it's helpful. If the professor I mentioned on my application rejects me, do I have a chance to be considered for admission by another professor? Yes. Yeah. So you, you can list multiple professors, um, but the initial review is done by whoever you, um, whoever you list. That'll be the first person who reviews your application. But they often then redirect it to someone else. So it's not just a one person reads your application and that's it. It's if they think you're a good match for a different person, they will send your application over to that person. So the, the applications move around a lot uh, throughout the faculty during the review process. So most, most applications have multiple people that look at them. Uh. So the question about per reaching professors in other departments, um, I would just go on that department's website. The, every department at BU has faculty listed. It has their emails. Um, you can absolutely email them from a personal email. That's, don't, there's no issue there. Um, and there's also a good chance that you could work with professors in other departments as part of your research. Uh, they can be joint advisors or just part of your committee or just there to help you. Yeah, and that's true with teaching stream faculty at CDS too. They can, you know, be on your on your uh, dissertation committee or things like that. They just can't be the one who funds you. Um, Gabe, could you answer uh, how important is real analysis slash measure theory for graduate coursework in machine learning and natural language processing? Uh, if it's not clear, I myself am not a data scientist, which is why I can't answer some of these questions. Great question. I have no idea. Uh, I personally do pretty much no machine learning um, and really no like uh, theoretical machine learning work. So I cannot answer that. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, how significant is publications in the admissions process? I'm assuming that's asking about prior publication. 
Um, so it's, uh, it, it's certainly helpful. I mean, it's a good thing it, for um, an application if you've already published. Um, that's definitely something to highlight, but it's not a requirement. Um, this session is also being recorded, so we will send out the recording afterwards. So if you missed any part of it, you can just go back and and uh, and rewatch. Um, so, but to answer the question of how can I know which professors need students to work with, um, it, when you go into the application, it will list which professors are not accepting PhD students. So if they are if they are not listed there, that means they are accepting students. Um, you can work with multiple professors. Uh, like we said, you know, you can have multiple professors on your dissertation committee, but you need to have one primary advisor who is the one who will be funding you for your third, fourth, and fifth year. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, so with GPAs, if you're currently enrolled, um, you should list whatever your current GPA is at the time of application. So if you're fi finishing up your schoolwork and you're, you know, you're um, still taking class in the fall semester, I would say wait until your fall semester grades are on your transcript uh, in order to apply. Uh, the student talking about coming from an electronics engineering, if you're getting a master's in computer science, you're going to be fine. You you will absolutely have the background you need um, to, to go into this program. Um, and also, being a PhD student is all about learning. So if there's something you're missing, you can always learn it later. Yeah, exactly. Uh, is it possible to change your primary advisor throughout the years? Uh, I mean, it... it it's certainly possible. It has not happened yet at CDS, which is the only reason I'm sort of like, hmm, I don't know. Um, but you're not, um, you know, you don't, you're, you're not signing an employment contract with a professor. It's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's an agreement that you're going to work with them. But you know, if you have someone else who wants to work with you and you want to change, there's nothing official within the program that prevents you from doing that. Um. Uh, Some of the professors whose research I'm interested in does not align with my research. What should I do in that case? Quite honestly, I would say you want to connect, try to connect with the ones who are better aligned with what you want to do, because professors are typically looking to accept PhD students that are working in the same area that they are. That's just simply how this system works. Um, let's see. Oh, the students say my, they will be available in early March, uh, my last academic course, just up, then whatever you have completed up to that point, it just submit whatever you have. We get plenty of applications from students who are currently in school, so it's really not a big deal. It's not unusual at all. Um, so the question about internship placement, because we're a new program, um, we, we've only had PhD students for just over two years at this point. So we don't have a central place where that um, that is housed. Gabe, do you know anything? Could you talk at all about internships anybody's done that you know of? I don't know of anyone who has done an internship. Okay. Yeah, we're, yes. we're still very much at the beginning of this program. So I think that will become... Um, much more common and we'll have information once it's available. But like I said, we still are only uh, just two, just over two years into having this program. Ah, question was more framed as previous research does not align with the PI's current research, but their research is what you're interested in going forward. Oh, then that's totally fine. You just have to really emphasize that in your research statement that that's what's going on. Um, the, the whole point of the research statement is to write about how what you want to do aligns with what the professor is currently doing. Uh, how many scholarships are targeting to... The question about scholarships, everyone who is admitted to the program gets a full scholarship. There's no, there is no difference um, 
between that. So anyone admitted to the program is fully funded with a full tuition scholarship, a $43,000 a year stipend, and their health insurance covered. Um, so, uh, Don, Gabe, and I will um, kind of also hang out here for a little bit more. We'll also send this recording out, but if you need to drop off, you know, please go ahead. You don't, uh, that, that's totally fine. Um, oh, Gabe, I think it was a question for you in the chat. All right, uh, reading it now. Yeah, so um, I had like a very strong engineering and computer science background, and I worked as a as a software engineer for a couple of years before applying to grad school. And uh, my advisor worked with me on a project before I applied uh, that was building a simulation of COVID spread in universities. So um, his experience, uh, he's a uh, professor of theology, along with a professor at CDS, um, and he has a long background of working on um, social science social science issues, but using a lot of computational methods. Um, so for my application, uh, since I had already worked with him a bit and knew sort of what he does, and he already knew me, uh, I talked about what I wanted to do in the future, which was um, sort of city modeling and human system modeling. Um, and we uh, sort of have just worked over the past year and a half or so uh, to figure out interesting projects for us to do together. Um, he does have a lot of experience using computational methods though. So uh, he has been able to provide like that advisor role in helping me move forward with research projects. Did that answer your question or do you wanna elaborate? Gabe, yeah, do you wanna talk about the future of uh, data science as well versus uh, the idea of a data science versus a computer science PhD? Yeah, so in my experience, um, computer science graduates are really well handled uh, or really well prepared to tackle um, problems of uh, efficiency and building systems that work really well, um, but they're maybe not prepared to uh, work in, I guess I would say work in industry in sort of uh, like machine learning oriented roles. Um, though also PhD programs are often in, uh, trying to get people to work in academia rather than industry. Um, but the difference with CDS as opposed to other CS programs is really the interdisciplinary emphasis. Um, so rather than working on a very strict sort of math and computer science projects, you're working on uh, projects that have a purpose beyond math and computer science using math and computer science heavy methods. Uh, if that makes sense. So people are working on, um, for example, theoretical computer science work where they're working with um, math theory and economics and all of that uh, to look at how people um, might be incentivized to choose um, housing uh, or stuff like that. So they're working on a problem that has a real world and cross-disciplinary uh, emphasis, but using theoretical computer science methods. Great. Um, let's see. Um, I currently hold I currently hold a BSc in mathematics. 
Yeah, uh, most likely the the short answer is yes. If you have a if your bachelor's degree is in mathematics, you will most likely, as long as you've had programming experience, I think you'll most likely be fine in terms of um, applying for this program. Um, and uh, the question about bioinformatics um, is so bioinformatics is a separate program. It is a it was a pre existing program at BU. It's about 20 years old and just in the last past few months it has joined computing it has become a program within computing and data sciences so it is completely separate um you can as a data science student take courses in bioinformatics and we will soon have a bioinformatics subject core that you can do as part of the phd program and as a bioinformatics student you can do you can take courses over in data science um you know, that are the courses that have a DS designation. Um, you can only apply to one of the programs though. So you do need to indicate on, you can apply to either bioinformatics or to data science, but there's a lot of overlap. And two of the core professors of, of bioinformatics are duly appointed in data science as well. And there are current PhD students in CDS who are doing uh, bioinformatics research. Question about research statements, uh, if it has to be specific or broad, a broad interest is, is totally fine. If you don't have like a, you know, I know exactly what I want to do. Um, so the question about the Wexler Fellowship. So Wexler Fellowships are something that uh, it's an endowed position for students that um, it's essentially gives you additional funding um, that you can use. So if you're accepted, you're offered a, a Wexler Fellowship, it's an additional $10,000 for the first year that is on top of the stipend you'll you'll receive no matter what and you can um use that as a discretionary funding for uh you know research costs or you know buying computers or you know travel uh you know if you have to go to con or you know spend on conferences that sort of thing so it's uh it's essentially like a, a micro kind of startup funds like a professor would have The question about admissions, um, it, it really depends on the professor. So not every professor does interviews. So there isn't really a formal first stage, second stage uh, type of admissions. It's they get sent out to the professors, professors kind of swap applications around and, and make a collective decision. Uh, let's see. Electrical, electronics, engineering graduate apply. Again, you know, because we've, we've had a lot of questions about like, can I do this or that sort of thing. It, it's, it, you, there are lists on our website of these are the subject areas you need to understand. And it's, you know, the proper mathematical foundations, programming, things like that. So I, I would recommend just checking that. And if you're still confused, shoot us an email and we'll let you know. But odds are, if you're coming from a strong STEM background, you're going to be totally fine. And then, like Gabe said, you know, if you need to take one course to catch up on something um, during your first semester, even if it may not technically count for the PhD um, program, like then that's just something that you have to do. It's it's really not that big a deal. Uh, Gabe, you want to talk about uh, cost of living in Boston? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm not the greatest person to answer this because I'm married and my wife has a real job. But um, for the other people in the program, uh, generally, it's pretty okay, but um, you will probably have to have roommates. Um, there are lots of ways to find roommates uh, at BU, like official ways and Facebook and all sorts of other things. Um, and everyone seems pretty happy. Uh, besides that, the department has been very uh, generous in funding various events for us. So um, we've gone out to dinner a bunch of times and done other things, which has not been a strain on people's personal finances. Uh, let's see. Uh, for graduate housing, I know at least one person in my year is living in graduate housing, um, but most people are living off campus. Yeah. 
So BU does have um, apartments that you can rent. There is also one graduate dorm as well. That's um, single rooms. I think they have their own bathroom, but it's a shared kitchen. Uh, it's called Peabody Hall. It's only 80 rooms, uh, so it does fill up pretty quickly. Um, but that does exist. Um, there are, are also apartments that are owned by BU. The reason most students live off campus is that the BU apartments tend to be kind of pricey, and you can get pretty much the same quality for uh, a not insignificantly less amount of money if you're willing to just go like 10 or 20 minutes off campus. Um, you do not, uh, the question about research experience, you, we do not require prior research experience. So you can absolutely apply if you do not have any. That's not a... Uh, not an issue with the application. Uh, let's see. So the, and again, the question about the research statement, there is, it gives you a question on the application that you can answer that gives you some guidelines about how to, um, how to write it. But it's really about where you want to go. You know, what do you want to do in the, in the five years you would be a student in the program? And what would you, um, you know, want to do afterwards once you complete your, your PhD. So it's very much about looking forward, looking ahead. What are your long-term goals? To answer a couple of questions about um, the interview, just, just to give people an idea if you're concerned about that. I did have an interview during my admissions process. Um, it was very short and casual. I met with my current advisor and one of the other professors um, and it was really just them asking me to elaborate on my research goals and why I was applying and all of that. Uh, that was pretty much all they wanted to hear. Also, for people concerned about their backgrounds coming in, uh, when I applied, I was feeling very insecure with my math background. Um, I had pretty much never taken a real statistics course, and the last real math course I had ever taken was in 2017. Um, so it had been a very long time. And my first semester, I took a very math heavy course and it was very, very difficult. Uh, but if you're just willing to work through it and put in the time and uh, learn, you'll be able to succeed no matter what. Um, for the other people in my program, I don't think there's anyone coming directly from a social science or media or non-STEM related field. Um, that said, if you're willing to learn the skills outside of your direct schooling, I don't see any reason why you couldn't excel in this program. Um, but I think everyone comes from some sort of STEM related field. And the question, interviews, if they happen, they would be after the deadline, because it would be after your application is reviewed. I think, if we've, I think we've answered everything. Yeah, you're very welcome. Um, and thank you to everybody who attended as well. Um, again, please feel free to uh, follow up with us if you have additional questions. Um, we are happy to help. As a reminder, December 15th, priority deadline. Highly recommend apply by the priority deadline. Um, and let us know if we can help. Thank you very much. Um, hey, so before we end the session, if you are, uh, we are giving everyone application fee waiver. So if you're interested in that, please email us at cds-admissions at bu.edu. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.